structure or whatever. Yeah. But this is uh, above this is another uh, this is one of my neighbor. I haven't prepared prepared so so much. I but just wanted to make something happen. If it's just really moving in the camera, right? So if somebody yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. okay. So Thank my you. my suggestion would be just to continue the talk from from the Ava and and we'll talk about the social committee. My uh, well, it, it, the idea was one, uh, at least uh, when when I issued this this name social committee because there was a question from uh, Sven Luther to to, to ask the, the, the technical committee. For, for some decision, but it was not the, the duty of the technical committee, and so there was something missing. That was the incident that there was. It was the incident where the, the, this social committee name was first issued, so I don't know the name. But the, the problem is we need something that, that solves these issues because we have much more social issues than technical issues in my opinion. Yeah, so um, I have a kind of argument that I think will get us explain why we're here. So. We have demonstrated that we don't have a mechanism really short of expulsion that at all works for dealing with people who are behaving permanently or temporarily in some really bad way. Um, just being disruptive. And nearly everybody else has some kind of mechanism. If you think that there should be some, kind of, some, some such mechanism, really this means that somebody is going to have to make a decision about what kind of behavior is acceptable or not acceptable. We don't currently have anybody who in Delhi is willing to make that decision. The DPL technically can, but typically the DPL does not want to. Now you think, well, okay, so we're going to invent, we really have to invent some new role. We don't want to overload any of the existing people, probably. Um, and if you have just one person, then there's a kind of social dynamics problem because these are all social problems and the people involved in such a dispute are already angry and not thinking clearly and talking past each other. And having some kind of dictator, one person dictator who's just appointed in some really bad way is not going to solve the problem. I think in fact that's why folks, you know, that's why the DPL is perhaps not as right. like simple and obvious an answer as some people might like it to be. And the, the account managers are only two, so we just split the responsibility, but it's, it's still concentrated, so yeah. it's not a solution. Right. So, this leads us to the idea that there should be several people, and, well, in Debian, mostly we call these kind of things teams or committees. And given that its main purpose is making decisions rather than actually doing things, that's possibly why we want to call it a committee. But that doesn't really answer any of the other important questions. Now I made a list of the questions that we need to answer in this BOF. And there's really four questions. What should this committee be allowed to decide? What should its powers be? How should it be appointed or elected or who should be on it? How internally should it work? Or maybe who should decide how it should work? And finally, Supposing somebody disagrees with it, what will be the route for appeal? And we can expect that this appeal mechanism will be used. Uh, if you look at the ITF processes for the same kind of problem, all of the most disruptive people who cause the most trouble all, pretty much always end up appealing every decision against them to the IASG and eventually to the IAB. Um, now, we unlike the ITF, are able to actually expel somebody who's just being such a useless person. Uh, one point. Uh, Andrea said earlier that we are continuing on uh, Andy Bart's uh, idea. Uh, well, uh, we had uh, maybe two or three discussions about governance. Uh, while a social committee would be a method of governance in a general sense, uh, it wouldn't actually solve all the governance problems, no, or, or, nor should it attempt to. So this would be just the, the way of, you know, there are two kinds of, uh, there, there, there's non-technical issues, yeah. uh, the amorphous mass of non-technical issues. And uh, uh, one major class of those issues is uh, related to management, to leadership, and one uh, is to uh, just getting along. The social committee should uh, 
uh, uh, help to alleviate the problems with getting along, uh, so that uh, it can uh, leave more time for people to get into maybe other non-technical issues. So we shouldn't uh, resolve all issues, we should just uh, deal with this li little niche, or well, well, so a large niche. So I completely agree. I mean, uh, in Andy's governance stuff, that, though I was not able to be at the session this week, uh, you know, I've had conversations before, and clearly this is part of this continuing thread of, of evolving ideas about how the project should run itself as we continue to increase in scale that goes back at least as far as the talk I did in Helsinki at DevCon 3. So um, I, I completely agree with you. I think what we're trying to focus on right now is a much narrower case than the completely generalized, let's solve the whole governance thing forever, <laughs> <laughs> which is the very specific case of, um, and, and, and look, you know, we've had some interesting discussion among various subgroups of people this week about post-mortems on recent um, human interaction issues that have come before the project. And I think the thing that's become increasingly clear is that there does need to be some reasonably well-defined sequence of events that one of the situations can go through um, that has some intermediate resolution step potential yeah. before you get to the banning from the list, expelling from the project kind of stage. And in fact, I would suggest that part of the operating behaviors, the powers that such a committee should have uh, to kick off that part of the, the thinking discussion would be to act as the gating function for deciding when it's time for a close master to engage in some kind of a list banning action or to be the principal method by which a recommendation goes to our dams that this is now a situation that um, is, is worthy of consideration for expulsion. And so those are the kinds of decisions that people in process-oriented roles, like managing mailing list servers, don't want to and really shouldn't be expected to make, and yet somebody has to make to provide them guidance about when to take action. And one thing, uh, if the, the mere existence of such a body, uh, such an instance, uh, will uh, serve to de-escalate problems, because Perhaps. people will be, uh, a certain percentage of people will be disinclined main problem because there's no longer the open field of abuse that they can engage on. There will be, you know, an option. Right, right now we have the DPL, but obviously the option hasn't been used in 10 years. So, okay, it's not working. Uh, I think it's uh, also uh, hard for the DPL to, to make some face-to-face yeah, yeah. decisions. So if you need some okay. help to... to uh, yeah. Well, let's be clear. I mean, we have once in our not too far distant history exercise an expulsion process where it was a coalescence of opinion of the EPL and the DAM team at that time that actually needed to be taken, and that was about a year ago. Uh, which one was it? And the DAM team at, at the last DEVCON. And it was, in fact, oh, an right. ad hoc, it was an ad hoc yeah. social committee, if you will, yeah. in the sense that because they were all in the same place, it was pretty easy to pull the, the DPL, the DAMs, but various other people all together in a room and have a conversation that led to a decision. So uh, the same problem persisted throughout the year. So maybe it, there was a, a, a different individual, different circumstances. But yes, my point was simply it's not that no with that it's person. Not, it's not that this no, with that person we had problems on the online forums. Or yeah, I, the point I'm trying to make is simply you said that it's never been exercised. Oh right, the reality right. is it has maybe, been exercised. Yeah. It just it was difficult. It was unusual. And Obviously, it doesn't scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the problem is uh, it, it is very hard to make sure that uh, the person who is well, attacked by the TPL uh, says, well, you don't like the, the color of my hair, and that's why you are explaining me. And then so we have to make sure that it's not a personal conflict between two persons, but that there's somebody behind who uh, <coughs> plays the two, two DPL and gives advice or whatever. So let's, back to, let's get back to Ian's first point, yeah. which was <laughs> powers. powers. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so you proposed the explicit power of recommending banning from lists. Right. I, what I'd actually said was, was the power to make all access control decisions. Right. But having thought about it, it's not entirely clear that that's correct. Um, so if you look at that power, that power would have included 
the power that the developers exercised with the um, the upload, the right. recent GR about upload rights would be, that was an access control decision and my wording that I proposed would have covered that and that I think was an unintended consequence if we put it like that. Mm. So I'm not sure, do we in fact want it also to cover, <clears throat> would we want it to have the power, the reason I put it like that was because the original sort of test case was Sven who who wanted access to a CVS or an SVM repository. Yeah, commit, right, yes. Yeah, he wanted, and that also is a similar kind of... Yeah, how do we separate the technical matter from a social matter in such a case? Um, well, did, whether or not you grant somebody commit access is... That's that's a political question, yeah. not a technical question. Or, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, but, but in the process of asking that question, you do raise an interesting point, and that is that you have to make sure that whatever powers processes and escalation procedures are defined for and ascribed to this potential committee have to fit well with the rest of our you know, constitutional structure and the other organizations that exist and what their powers and escalation processes are. So um, we just need to make sure as we go through this that you know, create something that's going to be its own source of internal conflict. I think we don't want something that overlaps with the technical committee too much so people end up talking to both and I think, I, think, uh, I think this is not difficult because, as yeah. James pointed out, um, there is, at least in the minds of many of us, a fairly crisp delineation between whether something's technical or not. And as long as there's some mechanism for there to be a conversation when we're getting close to those boundary conditions, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, I actually specified in my constitutional amendment proposal that the social committee, as soon as all the members of the committee can't uh, agree whether an issue is social or technical, it defers to the technical committee. <coughs> Uh, I mean, uh, this is the junior committee. This, this would be the junior committee. So maybe it's best that it defers. Just if, if there is a disagreement, if a political decision is more technical than social, let it defer and then... This, this also leaves open the possibility that the technical committee might be a useful appeal body. Right. If you, if you structure it like that, then one of the problems that we've had with recent attempts to use the technical committee to solve social problems is that you end up with an argument that somebody <coughs> sees some, you know, we, we, had, we actually had somebody claim, and not Sven, that an access control decision in a, in a repository was a technical decision because it was implemented using technical I'd like, means. I'd like to make a concrete suggestion, and that is that we don't think of a social committee as being subordinate to the technical instead think of it as being parallel to the technical committee, that the in questions of which committee should be reviewing and deciding a decision, that we look to the DPL mm -hmm. to make that decision. And I would think that the DPL or the developers through GR would be the obvious path for escalation, in the same way that it's true with the technical committee. The right, developers by means of GR can choose to rule the, the, the technical committee. So. That was the way I originally imagined it, but, but one of the things that we're constantly arguing about is, particularly on the technical committee list, is, is what does technical mean, and whether <laughs> something is technical or not, and it, it's really unhelpful, right? You end up having an enormous conversation about jurisdiction, and you don't reach the, well, the meat why, of the matter at all. Well, this is why I think it would actually be helpful to have the question of jurisdiction be something that lies in the hands of a single elected representative. Because then, there would, you know, asking the DPL to decide should the social committee or the technical committee make a decision on this seems reasonable enough and unlikely to cause any enduring strife. Whoa. And at the same time, it's not asking that one individual to, to make, make a decision, decision as such. such. Yeah. It, it's in fact, they get to make the meta decision about where this should go. And then I think either committee, you know, one, one would hope that, that that wouldn't go wrong too often, and it's the thing the committees can discuss amongst themselves, but uh, it just seems to me that a straightforward solution yeah, that would be, sense. That works, yeah. if, if there's any question about which committee should handle it, the, the DPL could designate one of the committees as the appropriate yeah, In the case of social <laughs> difficulties, as soon as you find, as soon as somebody notices that the committee that's currently dealing with their problem isn't 
liking the answer they're getting, right? And this will, the way it will work is somebody will approach one of the two committees with some grievance, and there'll be some argument backwards and forwards, and, and eventually it will become clear that the, the, the this committee is leading towards one side, or whatever mechanisms it has is, is, is really coming up with, with what one side feels is the wrong answer. And usually that will be against the more dysfunctional person, okay. just by so general rules. Right. <laughs> and that person will then immediately start to question the jurisdiction and say, well, now this is getting more like a, another matter. In the I think that's true, but my sense was that the only reason this would be invoked is if either of the committees thought they were being handed something that was more appropriate than the other committee. I think once a committee begins to deliberate on something, um, it would seem unlikely to me that either committee would think the right answer was to switch the committee that's dealing mm -hmm. with the problem. And so while I understand the behavior that you're describing, I don't personally feel the need to sort of have a complex mechanism for dealing with it. Because I think you have to write down very clearly something that would rule out this kind of forum change at that stage. Well, I mean, the worst case scenario in my mind is that you end up doing that sort of flip-flopping. A much better case that's easily handled with language is if you don't like the, the, the judgment of the committee that's reviewing the case, then it's GR time. Can I make a, a suggestion in the, along the, in this context? It might be worthwhile asking the parties to the dispute which committee they each thought this ought to be dealt with. And if they agree, and if they agree, then it's easy. Then it's easy, and then they don't later come back and say because exactly. they now they're bought into it. And if they don't agree, they don't they agree, they then the DPL will decide. Yeah, possibly with consultation with the two committees. <coughs> right, right. I mean, presumably, what will actually happen is the committees will all say the same thing to the DPL, and the DPL will decide that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll say, but it's your problem. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, not us. <laughs> I reckon it's more appropriate to the other committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what he gets to do as elected. Right, if you get to be on both committees, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> Another corner case is uh, what if the DPL decides to uh, ask one committee uh, for the ruling and then doesn't like it and doesn't ask the other committee? <laughs> well, the, the rules well, would not. say. The rules would say. Yeah, we have to preclude that. Right, exactly. Are, so they are right. delegates, and they cannot be overruled by the DPL anywhere. So the DPL will have They may to not be delegates. We haven't decided that's, yet that's whether they are. Yeah, we can't decide that too. Okay. That's, I was going to say, that's not necessarily true yet, though it's an interesting topic that we maybe should go to fairly soon. The, um, it certainly has been in my mind that the structure we wanted was one where the DPL would have the to help resolve questions of jurisdiction and might perhaps be one of the avenues for escalation, though frankly, I think an escalation path that doesn't you know, sort of put this back in the hands of a single individual would be smarter than what <laughs> it's already stated. And so I also think an escalation path that says, you know, once this has gone to a committee and the committee's made a decision, your recourse is singular is a GR. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to me like a completely reasonable thing. Yeah. 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 We really are talking about processes that, while well, Ian's quite correct, these processes and their escalation paths will be exercised. We certainly hope that the yeah. running lots of items through this committee is not the normal operating mode. We right. certainly, I think, hope that this is the thing that helps to temper and provide some context to the interpersonal relationships and behavior so we don't have to invoke it all the time. Uh, I actually didn't even specify the escalation path if someone disagrees with the committee. For jurisdiction I did in the proposal. I said, okay, go to the technical committee, but uh, for content issues. After it's decided, there's no uh, additional specification. It just says, okay, it can be overridden by GR in general. So I think we are agreed on that. So another th question that we might ask ourselves is, we frame this as a dispute between two sides, but sometimes you find that people are behaving badly and that people, you know, maybe they're not behaving badly towards anybody in particular, but they're just, you know, badly. they're just behaving badly. And <laughs> unlike the technical committee, the social committee needs to be able to, when it becomes aware of such a thing, 
have, well, firstly, somebody on the social committee needs to go and have a quiet word, and if that doesn't work, eventually <coughs> we have so, some kind of... So the social committee needs to be probably more proactive, rather than wait for somebody to bring an issue, they actually need to be monitoring... In the US system, that would be sort of the role of having an attorney general or someone who's sort of, you know, willing and able to bring suits... So one exactly. way, way to think of that is problem. to say that, yeah. that, 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 that effectively the person on the social committee who first had the quiet word will end up being, we think of as the, like, the complainant. And excluded from the committee. And then remove himself from the committee. And then will be included from the, from, from the, yeah, from yeah. the voting or whatever. At the, at the same time, uh, this conference <coughs> and the idea that we don't want it to be a, a prescriptive body, you know, with, uh, no design work. Uh, it's a little bit in a conflict, so if you uh, allow it to go after cases, uh, it, it, it go after uh, problematic cases, and uh, it becomes like a body that can run a mock, you know. You know? It, it, I was thinking about this a little while ago, particularly after um, Sam's question or assertion about um, the delegation status of this, and it strikes me that what we may actually be after here are two kinds of behaviors that might all be embodied by one body, but it might actually be that we want two things. We might want, a, in effect, a delegated social team, which is the proactive, you know, trying to, to work with people and drive behaviors that are appropriate. And then we might want something more like the current constitutional structure of the technical committee that isn't specifically subordinate to the DPL, though the DPL would perhaps in the same kind of way be involved in helping to, to manage the constituents of the committee. I don't know, but I have this notion that perhaps there's the sort of proactive, trying to, you know, oil the machine in the right places kind of... I think it's behavior. important that those... And there's the resolution act. I think it's important that those things be essentially the same body. Because, well, there's a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that just dealing with, with, with nutcases is going to be a really thankless task. Right. Whereas, <coughs> if you well, giving those people on the social committee also the role of having a quiet word with people who are just you know a bit stressed out at the moment, yeah. that's a much more positive role. And actually, if somebody has a quiet word with you, most people will appreciate that later and say, "Well, thank you very much." And, you know. Right. That's and a good point. the other reason is that a bunch of people who could have a quiet word, but don't carry a big stick. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, well, it's really the, the dynamics of the situation are very different. There's not a, a parent-child relationship. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to make some some you know like like parent figures who who can who can give you a detention if yeah, or exactly. a teacher or somebody. I well, certainly had quite words with the people before. But yeah, you know, and said the usual words in time necessary, and they were just yeah, uh, you bastard, I hate you too. <laughs> 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 so I don't think we have a danger of this thing running amok, because there's... I think we have a danger of people voting against it because they think it will run amok. You know, in our little, let's say, fair universe in Debian, there's a lot of people who are just anarchistic and afraid of the, how do you say, Uncle Sam or whatever. So, so, so let, me, let me correct that. There. I don't think there's a lot of people like that. I think there's a very vocal minority. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Do we think I, I that they can think, harm the process? I don't, I don't think we've ever seen a problem when something, for example, has come to a GR with a totally unexpected and irrational behavior resulting. Because I think we do have... Uh, editorial sort of changes. <laughs> okay. That was a question of people really not understanding, having, not understanding the issues and so forth. Not paying attention. And honestly, um, it's almost a good thing to have in our history because I don't think anyone will ever not pay attention to a GR again. You know? we'll see. Although, I, I, I shouldn't be too optimistic. Here, I did argue a different case against that, but okay. Yeah, let's not delve into that. I understand. So, so where does this leave us? So, we could write some. Well, the. the the question is ultimately, if the, if the social committee makes some decision, the end result of this decision is going to be, in most cases, it's going to be if it actually needs to act, which most of the time we hope it won't, 
will be a mailing list ban, or an IRC ban, or... Uh, well, in interjection. Or, uh, it will be a descriptive opinion of what <coughs> can be done. That, that's first, documentation about uh, what it has decided, uh, what, why it is deciding anything. I think that's, that's a paramount, you know, it, it has to explain itself to the developers. So it right, but obviously there will be an explanation, but the question is, we're talking about powers now. Okay. Not, obviously any committee has the power to work away. But that's a power. Right? And we but should... that's a power in the social yeah, yeah, context. Right. right, but... And it could actually have an effect. It could have an effect. And so so merely, a, just merely a recommendation. So merely a recommendation from the social committee for somebody else to take some action may well be heeded, but if we would like that to be heeded, even just writing down explicitly that we expect it to make certain kinds of recommendations would be very helpful. But do we want it to have the ability to decide or merely to recommend? Maybe that's a big step. <laughs> I think, yeah. to be honest, it's got to be decided, because at the moment yeah, we've got several of the groups who don't want to decide. So I think, we, yeah. I think we have potentially a couple of kinds of cases. One is, in the case of something like a mailing list ban, I think it should be decided, because yeah. we've had very clear indication from the people who are providing process support by being things like list masters, that they don't want to make decisions mm -hmm. on things like this. And this is one of the roles that I think we're... The bug system applies at just the same. I think yeah. that's quite true. And then I Actually, think the bug system is a little different. Anthony did ban two people, explicitly, right. like, not ad hoc. Not only Anthony, I mean, uh, oh, well, others are already that well, or recently, <coughs> uh, oh, I think in the case of the BTS, it's a little crisper sometimes yeah. than what's the abuse and what's not. What's abuse and what's not. Yeah. Because there is a technical aspect to what's going on there that makes it a little crisper sometimes. And I think being the steward to the BTS other is easier. Case, there's the other case where, um, in the case of an expulsion, I think there needs to be some thought put into whether this is a recommendation or a decision. I think the sense that I've had from recent conversations was that the committee recommending to the dams that it is now time for you to make a decision yes. about expulsion yeah. Yeah. was a good way to put this because we do have a pretty well defined the dams of the final stop yeah. decision. Yeah. Right, right. Process. When it actually got so bad that we had to expel somebody, that actually worked. Yes. And that was pretty, I mean, okay, so it was an unpleasant flame war, but really you're just not going to be able to expel somebody without an unpleasant flame war. And, yeah. Yeah. and so I think the sense that I had was that what our current dam team would appreciate was a committee that in fact told them when it was time for them to start paying attention to the flame war enough to make a decision as opposed to just ignoring it. Because they right, the, the, the current thing is really pathological because it leads to these kind of trollish, <coughs> please can I collect my cue now, postings? I hate you, I'm going to try to expel you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit graphic, <laughs> but yeah. And really, uh, uh, this is also a big difference, right? If we think about public and private, an awful lot of the work of the social committee will have to be done in private, because a lot of it is to do with face, and you can you can even tell somebody to stop doing something, and they can either choose to make an issue of it and tell everybody because they think you're being an asshole, or they can just say, well, right then, and provided nobody has to know that. Yeah. yeah. I think we had an interesting conversation earlier this week about the fact that in the modern world, things that end up on the public mailing list end up in search engines, end up being things that employers look at and so forth. And while the vindictive among us may appreciate the notion that you'll never be hireable ever again because you were such a smart to us, I think at the same time, um, there is a growing sort of body of legal opinion that's in various jurisdictions around the world that says that um, you know due process needs to be applied on things that may end up having lasting impact. And so I have this general notion that an ability to do at least the first round or two of this kind of interaction without leaving you know, sort of a stain on your permanent record um, is a useful thing for us to have within the project. And I think it's equally clear that when things escalate to a certain point, it is absolutely essential that the switch flips and we go to a nice, crisply, sort of publicly documented sequence of events 
so that there's no real question later about whether this was personality or vindictiveness or whatever based. And it was a very clear, you know, this is our process, these are the steps we're going through, and boom, you just tripped over the final gate and you're gone. Right, yeah. so the formal decisions <coughs> are taken in public, is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. And the informal stuff is done in private. I'm Although not. we should make a rule that if a social committee member mail somebody some advice about their behavior, then that email needs to be archived. Is, well, then what we do is we say that the recipient of such an email may publish it without the consent of the committee member. Yeah. Right. And that way, if... if it should be BCC to the uh, sort of archive as well, so people can see what's No, well, it shouldn't, because what will happen is it, it, you want to be able to tell somebody off, and if they agree with being told off after having you know, slept on it, then you, want, you don't want a permanent record of that anywhere. You don't want trollish no. people coming in and... <laughs> Possibly, but uh, you, you, you don't want the entire right? committee having a private word and then they're excluding them to all this themselves from the position. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Hold on, hold on. There's still a assertion that having a private word with somebody would exclude you from being able to have a judgment later in the process. And I actually disagree with that because I would suspect that almost, if not everyone, who is involved in making our recent expulsion decision um, had, at some point, had some kind of interaction and tried to help make the right things happen. So I think, I think we have a problem, or we're <coughs> building a problem for ourselves if we're too pedantic about the notion that you ever tried to have a quiet word with somebody and now you have to recuse yourself from future <coughs> actions involving that person. That just seems yeah. unworkable, unscalable, and undesirable to mm. me. I understand this notion that if, in effect, we build a mechanism where the only way we can make a decision is that we have to have sort of two combatants duking it out and somebody makes a decision between them, and you're expecting the person who first had the quiet word with them to sort of take on that role, that it would be inappropriate for them to be in that role and simultaneously. But in, in, in recent history, the cases I can recall have really been individual against the project, even if one or more of the parties involved chose to try and articulate it as this person against that person, and even if there were points of heat that were between this person and one or two or three more attacked than others people. I don't think we expel people from the project for having one-to-one -one relationship issues. <coughs> in general case, we expel them from the project if their behavior is so detrimental to the project as a whole that we can't tolerate their presence. And so there's a there's something here where I want to right. make sure there's we don't question of jurisdiction though, right? The place where that really came in was trying to get agreement, jurisdictional agreement. Okay. And yeah, right. if, okay. if 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 you have a quiet word with somebody and then later you have to email them and get their permission <coughs> to beat them over the head with a big stick. <laughs> well, they're going to say, no, I'd rather not be beaten over the head with a big stick. <coughs> Can I just interject and ask someone to shoot the pipe, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, it's like an word. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, we could have it made by default, and the, since the only other thing that the, that the person can say is, no, actually, the technical committee should deal with this, yeah. then if they do that, the first thing the technical committee will do is say, we delegate this decision to the social committee. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> so that's why, you know, I, I really, to go back to what I said a little while ago, I think our, the, the best structures to have these not be, not have the two committees, you know, kind of... Well, not as well supporting side by side. Yeah. I think, you know, my first thought is to have them be in parallel and use the DPL as the jurisdictional decision point necessary. The um, other, I thought your idea about you know, The other possibility is if we actually say explicitly what the powers of the social committee are in terms of, you know, for example, maybe Mr. Bannon or that kind of thing, then it's obvious that the technical committee doesn't have those powers at all. Yeah. And that means that we don't need to worry when the social committee decides something that somebody's going to argue the technical committee should have decided it or vice versa. True. Because the technical committee decides on the contents of a package and the social committee decides on the mailing list filters. And 
it's not quite that simple. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, 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 the grey areas, for example, if we've got a dispute between two people over use of a public resource, for example, that's a... Well, I mean, th those cases will come up, but agree, that's where that's where we end. Up, we let the DPL make the choice. I was trying at one point to sort of have you know have this be sort of content versus access, and mm -hmm. you know to go back to your thought earlier when we're talking about commit access to a repository, I'd expect the social committee to worry about who has commit access and the technical committee to be worrying about what got committed. Sure. And that that's a, another one of those. I'm sure we can come up with some corner case where you have to think about this differently, mm -hmm. but in terms of trying in my own mind to, you know, to find useful and practical boundaries, that's the kind of way I've been thinking about it. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether we can get uh, the community running uh, without worrying too much about these corner cases. You know, will the people accept it? And then we can move, uh, fix things as we go along. So, so far, Nearly all the powers that we're talking about are powers that the DPL already has. I don't think anybody is suggesting giving this committee some power that technically the DPL already doesn't have and nearly fail, that, uh, one that just the DPL fails to exercise. So, so this could be... That um, leads me to suggest that this should be done with a DPL delegation and hopefully the constitution means that the DPL still isn't an appeal route for an individual decision, so we don't need to cover that case. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is really helpful because it means that we don't have to get it right first time. That's correct. Mm -hmm. We can write we up can some... can through delegation, <coughs> butting, fix things if necessary. And right, and the committee itself required. will be able to just informally have a word with the DPL and say, please change this, and if the committee says, please change this, the DPL will do it, probably. And, and my suspicion is that that, that allows us to get to something working sooner because we don't have to go through the constitutional and the GR process. Right, but that too. Uh, frankly, yes, is a I, I, I agree with that. Uh, I think it's important to understand that a large part of our, well, DPL discussion every year uh, turn around this problem of social internal stuff and uh, it makes sense to the DPL to be able to, well, change the direction that the uh, social community has been one thing that came to my mind later, uh, after I written the constitutional amendment, uh, maybe we could have, uh, uh, okay, uh, let me explain my basis. Uh, because the idea is that we get more people elected, because it's a major process decision, you know, uh, it, it involves uh, having a whole new procedure and uh, 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 perhaps a, a, a minor, but still some uh, a constitutional amendment. Uh, I think it's a good idea if the, all the developers uh, vote for it, but uh, they don't have to vote for a constitutional amendment, they can vote for a GR, which is a position statement. So the committee could be founded by a position statement. Is that uh, viable? Does anyone know? It is, and I think there's just a... Um... If we're going to elect these people, it, makes sense it, doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense to have two votes. That's correct. Right? We should either vote to establish this committee and the DPL will just decide who they are. Or we should have the DPL set it up and then we'll run an election. Alright, but in your proposal... Because there's no requirement <coughs> that votes only happen on constitutional matters. Right. We in fact use our GR process for <coughs> constitutional issues too. So. Yeah, now could it actually... Is, would, it, no, would it be useful to actually to have a GR with of the general development body to, to actually set up the social committee in the first place. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to see so, this happen so, so we can get the, real buy-in and show that so the majority the, of people want this. So the answer is that's one way that you can do it. And yes, it does help fairly quickly to establish a sense of the project on things right. like this. Yeah. I think the point that Raphael's making is, is sort of equally valid that if these are in fact all powers that are ascribed to the DPL anyway. Mm -hmm. And if we already go through a large discussion each year around social communications and behavioral issues as part of our DPL election process, I think Sam could equally straightforwardly choose to announce that one of the things he's pleased to be able to do as DPL with the mandate that he got by being elected to be able to institute this. <coughs> and there's an opportunity within a few months, less than a year, 
certainly, for there to be a you know, effective support of or a um, you know, revocation of that in the process of whether, uh, of you know, who gets elected as DBL next year and what their platform did or didn't say and what they what positions they take and all of this to on. So I think it's a question of, of sort of your sense of w what's important in this process and when it's important to have that sense of the project. <coughs> uh, one point, uh, you're, you're, you're interpreting it from a historical standpoint. You know, uh, all these powers are uh, uh, descend from the DPL's powers. Uh, you said that uh, they are basically the, 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 the constitution. This constitution system, but uh, so, the constitution isn't necessarily, uh, you know, our uh, moral vertical. You know, I don't know how to say that in English. It isn't necessarily right in that matter. Uh, I think it's a more uh, fair, in a general sense, that the uh, developers uh, simply decide by a uh, general resolution vote, which is a constitutional tool, but it's a generic tool, you know, just by democratic. I see what you're saying. You're, what you're in fact saying is you think this process would have a stronger sense of a mandate and perhaps be more likely to succeed yeah. if it was launched through a GR process. Can yeah. I make a suggestion? So, if you only hold an election to appoint the people, then the refuse mix are going to find it, it's not going to be a way for them to express that properly in the ballot. Yes. So, we could ask Manoj to put the two things on the same ballot and vote on them at the same time. I know he said he can't, he can't, he can't do them with the vote. It's technical. He could, he could do them two votes at the same time. He could run two votes at the same time. Okay. That's, that's just as good. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same email. It just has to be simultaneous. The point is, we don't want to run them one after the other because that just... Yeah, that just yeah. 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 In the tape. We've collected this committee, but we don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Logo, but we want it the other way around. <laughs> What's the difference between having this and having none of the above mean uh, I don't want to None of the above means means, uh, means means that the people who don't beat none of the above don't get elected, but the people who did beat none of the above do. Give a chance before they reach the quota. Yeah, and, and, and also it might be the same as a social committee is a good idea, but of course, whatever we need, need five people in there or seven people in there, uh, but I always think two candidates are good, but the others are clap. So, how should I vote then? Uh, I, uh, one thing is problem. Uh, if we have uh, two parallel votes, uh, both for the uh, establishment and for the composition of the committee, the problem is that the nomination period for this non-existent social committee has to be... Uh, no. that's, that's, that's absolutely fine, because the decision by the DPL to do this can just say, please, because of the DPL's oh, powers, you, you allow the DPL just to do it anyway. The other advantage of doing it like that is that the, the, the decision to establish what happens, the way you work it is the DPL says, I hereby plan to establish this social committee, and there will be elections and so forth. Manos, please run an election. And furthermore, I also propose to overrule my own decision. And here is the thing to say, we will not have a social committee, or something like that. And, you, and, and the, the, or, or some equivalent thing, or, you know, here's my approval. And he just says, I won't do it if you don't like it. Um, and that would the, be sensible. The, the technicalities of it don't really matter, and everybody knows that what is probably going to happen is people will vote yes and elect some people, but maybe people will vote no and then the election is moot. And that, that would be all right. Nobody would really mind that very much. Uh, we should catch this out with the knowledge because he's the secretary. Yeah, it's, no. it's dope. On the list, on the project list or on the vote list? So uh, we discussed about uh, whether we, uh, two votes are possible at the same time. Uh -huh. Still discussed. So is this right? We want it to be approved by, at last by the project, but the uh, uh, the committee would still be delegating. Uh, no, no. Formally, the committee would have to be delegated. That is, the committee would be established by a delegation decision from the DPL, and that's important because it enables the DPL to change the delegation. Sure. And we explicitly want to write in and say the DPL is expected to see how it works, and the committee was expected to to write its own rules and all this kind of stuff, because we don't want to have a huge. But GR every time. Uh, are we planning to have re elections? That you? was the next question. That was the next question. Yeah, I think it's a bad idea. Because 
other, you know, most of what it does is in secret. And so if people really yeah, want to be able to... No, why yeah. is that? I don't get the idea that most of what it's most going of what it's to, going to do is going to be having quiet words with people. Exactly. And that's all right, but yeah, and you don't know not. that people so, are doing it. So, why, so why, what basis do you have right. to re-elect people? Right. And in fact, <coughs> this has actually been a challenge for most DPLs through here. <coughs> yeah. The way things like this have been dealt with in the past has meant that, uh, you know, it was certainly the case during my tenure as DPL that a lot of the things that I was doing that I think were really useful and helpful to the project were completely out of view, and I would have felt it inappropriate to be talking about them publicly because of the nature of who was being talked to and what was being said. And, 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 and it leads to this interesting situation where um, you know, all of the things that you're sort of the most proud of are the things that people haven't seen and aren't going to ever be able to give you credit for. So the thing I worry about with I mean, it perhaps as a, a means of establishing an initial constituency for such a committee, an election process would be one appropriate thing. But I worry about this whole sort of uh, dynamic of, you know, you're putting someone in a situation of wanting to tell you about the six or eight things they did that they're really proud of in order to convince you that they should continue in that role, and that might all be breaking confidence. So I. There's a strange dynamic here. I don't know what the answer is. I just uh, uh, put that concern out. One main concern uh, that, well, Menard agreed with me, so I think I have some basis on that. <laughs> uh, even if it's just pedantic or something. Uh, the accountability that is provided by regular re-election, even if regular means every five years, uh, is important. Because uh, people want to have, uh, because it's all these decisions are sensitive and something, and it, they are really moot. They are vague. You know, do I like this person or do I trust this person enough to make decisions for me and things thing like that? Uh, you want to introduce a measure that will allow people to replace uh, the bad seeds, even if it's uh, you know every five years. If, if it's uh, just a so, so you want the decisions of the committee to be playing to the gallery for the last year of every five years. Well, no, there's, there's no, 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 no. That's probably all right, actually. We don't mind if this particular thing plays to the gallery. There is a, there is a mechanism, at least in the US, where um, judges are appointed, and yet they, they're appointed for a term, and they can be removed by general election at the end of the term, or they can be kept. And if they're removed, someone else gets appointed. Right. So it's uh, this interesting hybrid of you don't get to elect anyone you want to that position, but there is, in effect, a periodic opportunity to vote someone out if the general claim is that this person's been an idiot and isn't helping. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I, was, I, just was, I, was, I was withdrawing something. It should be, we can just sit out and sort out who is just sorted out and not doing any little work anymore for the last year because of exactly, yeah. other priorities, which is, of course, fair. And that will happen in five years' time. Okay. They will lose twenty percent of people. You know. So, so, well, so you have elections to replace. Run approval voting <coughs> individually on each member, and then the ones that don't <coughs> get approved get replaced by the DPR. <coughs> that's replaced by that. the appointment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. That's fair. So, but we'll elect them to start with because. Well, no, either uh, either uh, one, I don't think you're think initial sort of appointments. I, we'll I just appoint care. them to start with. You. I don't care. My initial proposal was to have a, a bi-yearly election, where, of course, you know, uh, when I proposed a seniority quota, did anyone notice all that? Uh, mm -hmm. I, at first I said it was 33% of people have to be in the project for some period of time, so that they have, like, uh, experience, that there's, there's a mark of experience. Science and then some, someone said, uh, okay, uh, maybe we can't like that, uh, there's a mathematical problem, there's a loop, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, we reduced the quota. <coughs> and then even after the uh, quota was reduced to 25%, uh, one person uh, stepped up and said, okay, I think that the quota is a good idea, and we want seniors in the committee, uh, but uh, you don't have to specify it. It will play out like that. Uh, by default, anyway. people will. It will happen anyway. I have so, that. so uh, this 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 thing about uh, re-electing <coughs> people who were good, as as opposed to not electing the bad seeds, the people who weren't good or something. Uh, this will happen naturally. So you can uh, uh, put uh, all the uh, like <coughs> if you have seven people and you put all seven of them on the ballot, the five who were active uh, will get re-elected re by the uh, developer body because everyone will be just clicking the boxes. 
Uh, people aren't that distrustful. Uh, that's, that's something. Um, we are uh, maybe the vocal minorities who complain and bitch and <laughs> whatever. Uh, they make us think that we are a very uh, uh, non-cooperative bunch, but we are a co cooperative bunch. So uh, if you just put them there, they still will get elected. Real elected. Um, yeah, I, I mostly agree with you, but what I would like more to say, to make a sure that the, the, social, the, the social committee is moving forward still, even if it's re-elected, would be just to split up it in two parts and re-elect huh. one part each, each year, so we always have <coughs> about half of it to keep it at least oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Sam, you've been pretty quiet for a while. Do you have any thoughts <laughs> you want to throw in here? You've certainly been in the midst of some interesting discussions recently. <laughs> sure. Well, um, uh, one thing that I haven't said yet is that for the moment, what the powers that uh, uh, that will be delegated, the, the initial committee will be delegated. I have already been using them and, and to, uh, with quite some success because all the people that were being disruptive have magically stopped acting like that. So, uh, <laughs> by the way, you're expelled. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them weren't even they've been developers, uh, and, and well, I think we need to to decide that we need to act on people who are not living developers as well because uh, often uh, the people who are disruptive are just outsiders not very aware of what's happening in Debbie. Um, um, well, I, I really don't mind uh, delegating or going through a, a vote. I, I don't have an opinion on, on this. I'm really more interested in the actual powers of, of that committee. So, um, well, it's a little bit to take a decision whether uh, the, the bootstrap process of that committee should be through a delegation or through an election. Uh, I can make the decision if no one seems to, to be able to reach uh, consensus. We haven't quite finished the conversation, but it more or less we get. But uh, we need to document it on the mailing list and to get the opinions of whoever is not here. You know, to see maybe there's a fifth option. Well, I'm, I'm making some notes and, right. Right. and just that before I leave, I will, notes. just before I leave, I will write. I will sort of uh, five or ten minutes. I'll go through and just check that everybody is sort of roughly what I've written down. Uh, there, there seems to be a, an assumption people. in what you've been saying that uh, elections are an inherent good. I just want to state that I think that's not true. No, sorry, what do you think? I didn't understand you. The, uh, there seems to be a, a sort of assumption behind some of what you're saying that elections are. Uh, uh, which uh, elections? For the membership? For the membership. No, no, I, I was saying about the bootstrap process. Okay. But the general, general one, I think that we have a lot of elections and things. Right, like, like, we I didn't think, discuss that. Okay. okay. The details thing about the, about the judges is. Because essentially, this is more or less like a judicial. <coughs> yeah. The thing about the judges, it enables you to to get rid of bad people, but really the default will generally be to vote in favour of people, and that that's the way we want it. We don't want people to have to show all the good stuff they've done, and we'll keep them if they haven't yeah. basically caused some kind of problem. Yeah. So if we have a, an anti-vote rather than a vote, I, I would much prefer that because otherwise you have to have. You, know, you have to take time off to campaign to get back into the committee. You already yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Sure. Uh, If the, gen the general population of the, uh, the developers think that person's not putting their way, <coughs> then they can effectively start a campaign against the person, then they can defend themselves, and then we have a vote, and it's all clean. And if, if that doesn't happen, then you know. Yeah, but I think it would be a good thing to have votes by default, because I think that a lot of developers wouldn't consider it fit or it don't. Or feel that they would be oppressed if they was campaign against a certain person. Okay, so so it, we should, there should be votes ready for it, but okay. if, if, if it's How votes, I have a tendency to run to the side. Maybe time out because uh, the next one. You know, I think <coughs> we can push them away because there's time after their talk. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I would seem for uh, some people who want to form a social committee. <laughs> Why would you sort of vote for social committee? How often do you want to hold one of these antidotes? Um, yearly? Two yearly? Maybe <coughs> if we combine that, uh, if we say, uh, okay, there's a possibility of an anti-vote, you can vote uh, to remove someone, 
But there is, that's not what I mean. What the, the, the proposal really, as I understand it, is to do a kind of approval thing. So what you do is everybody is automatically voted on, uh -huh. and everybody votes separately. Uh -huh. Each voter votes separately, yes or no, for each individual person. Yeah. And all the people who uh, get more. I think Andy was votes. telling you that some people uh, won't want to, uh, will not want to uh, vote against somebody just because they were. No, no, no. It's the difference of, of voting or of making a campaign. Yeah. To say you need at least whatever seven. Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. To start this with something different. You're saying the vote is okay. Everybody should be voted on <coughs> automatically so that nobody has to start the campaign. Start the campaign. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but right. the question is, how often? Yeah, two years. Well, every two years, and we cycle two through half, the half of the committee each year. So yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Are you assuming you're Maybe it's approval, it's approval Sorry. votes. It's a, this is anti-votes or pro-votes? Approval votes. Anti-votes. But if, if, you, if you do approval votes, and even think we could do yearly, because it's expectations, then it's actually not what we would be de-elected. Yeah. And, okay. And the reason I would be in favor of that is because in our <coughs> industry and community, people's time and availability and interest changes. Right, right. right, okay, so if somebody is de-approved, does the DPL just appoint the replacement and they don't get, we don't vote again on a new person? On I, the new the person. DPL with, with the committee? Yes. Yeah. The DPL, should the, should the obviously, should the, should the committee not, not, not to make, like the tech committee, the committee, but DPL to do the replacement? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's the same problem, because when Technical committee can judge on technical complete competence of the or right. no, we, Really, and this is a popularity contest. To and let the DPL the committee decide on who's safe and who's insane for that kind of position. And, really and, and I, I, I would like to believe that no DPL is going to appoint someone who isn't going to work well in the committee. That would be. It would just it would be a problem for them as much as for the committee. Sure. And okay. the DPL is up for re-election annually anyway, so there's a okay. meeting function. Okay, that's okay. So it was implicit, initially, are we going to have the DPL produce a list of people and provide them for voting, or are we going to hold a normal election? That's a good question. I think for initial uh, election would be normal election would be fine definitely. because we don't have this problem of people sure. showing how good they've been. Yeah. yeah. So then, we're how do we decide the after one year? Well, we'll we'll re vote on everybody. If we hold the election, we'll re vote on everybody. And yeah. Does that mean that the number of people in the committee is fixed and immutable? The DPL decides the number of people in the committee. Oh, initially decides or from time decides time. more people? It's a DPL. Needed. The whole thing is DPL delegations. So the DPL can change everything about but, it but, whenever but, they feel like. I don't like yeah. it. So if they don't like the current committee. Actually, actually it would be safe to, 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 to dance for it sometimes because it's going to change, but not now. And I think our time is out. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. So, so Ian, Ian needs to leave, actually. So do you have like one or two more questions we can do very quickly? Otherwise right. I, I'm there. still... The thing that, that's really missing still is... Are we allowing it to decide its own procedure? Just a simple yes will do. Yeah. Yes, and it's about of the delegation, think, of course. Yeah, right, right, and the DPL can check yes. because it's, okay? Yes. And powers, we still, was my original proposal about access control decisions a good one, or have we got some other wording, or is somebody going to write some wording? <coughs> we're still a bit vague about that. I would think some list discussion leading to a DPL decision about which powers they think they want to delegate to this committee for the first round. Yeah, okay. We have two points important here. It, well, most, my major problem is mailing list first. So, and, and mailing list, we said that it concerns both DD and non DD, some said. So, <coughs> I oh. think it makes sense to be able to well judge a, uh, a mailing list, but also on behavior of uh, <coughs> DD outside, uh, I mean, on ERC and stuff like that, because they are representative of the projects. And, uh, yeah. And anything similar to the mailing list, such as, such as the wiki and the right. admin forums? Yeah. You don't need to expect the list at all. I just say, like on the, on the mailing list, there's the, the wiki, and everywhere else with the Debian developers that represent Debian, or the people that represent Debian, or affect how Debian is with the Okay, I think that covers almost everything. Most of the mechanics, I can probably write a concrete proposal, but I won't yet. I'll summarize what we've just discussed. And the powers thing is the thing that we've got left over, and we'll discuss that on the next time. Thank you. That was an astonishingly productive <laughs> discussion for such a difficult topic. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it's
Well, yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs>